Stog at Mark III. Should successfully deployed. We have narrow shell separation. Gonna Stog at Mark II. Descent engines at full throttle. One kilometer. Attitude control malfunction. Attempting auto correction. 400 meters. 200 meters. 15 meters. Loss of signal. Despite the setback of the failed test lander, the world is now on the verge of humanity's greatest adventure. The first human mission to Mars. Project Olympus is the culmination of unprecedented collaboration by the International Mars Partnership for this, the most complex space voyage ever. Nuclear thermal propulsion, never before used on a manned spacecraft, will carry our crew to the Red Planet and home again. Four spacecraft are required to accomplish the mission. Shirazi, the cargo vehicle, Atlantis, the surface habitat, their home base on Mars. Gagarin, the ascent-descent vehicle, carrying the crew from Mars orbit to the surface and back. And the Terra Nova, the crew transit vehicle for the 19-month expedition. Landing on Mars and taking off will be the mission's greatest and most dangerous technical challenge. But before they can reach the surface, the crew must survive the extreme physical and psychological demands of the journey. Never before have humans traveled so far from home and explored another world in the search for life beyond Earth. Nine, eight, seven, six, reactor active, four, three, engine start, one, and we have ignition for the first human expedition to the planet Mars. Godspeed, Terra Nova. Houston, Terra Nova, our profile is down the middle. Power system is nominal. Roger that. Telemetry shows NTR status is nominal. Can you confirm? I confirm, Houston. No constraints. Roger that. Lucia, you're missing the show. Don't let them lose that look. By the way, Terra Nova, you might want to take a look in your rearview mirrors every once in a while. Intelligence reports suggest that the Chinese will launch any day now. Uh, copy that, Houston. We'll try to hold on to our lead. for drop tank detach Alpha 1, Alpha 2. Drop tank detach Alpha 1, Alpha 2. Houston Terra Nova resetting NTR burn for TMI 2, Mark. Three, two, one, ignition. Roger that. Event code one, two, three, three. Houston, Terra Nova, we have an EPS event. 
Roger, Terra Nova. We copy that you have an electrical power system event and will advise. Flight propulsion go to card TMI abort. TMI abort card sequence up. Houston, Terra Nova, we are go for abort to Earth sequence. Do you copy? Terra Nova, Houston, stand by on ATE. Falcon confirms your EPS event as bat 2B. 1 2 temp out of range, safing failed. Copy that, Houston. A temperature sensor, right? That's a friend. Cabin avionics shouldn't be serious. Shouldn't be. Well, that's encouraging. Houston, I show no other spikes. I suspect faulty alarm. Roger that, Mikhail. Odin and Falcon concur. Do you wish to bypass the alarm? Antoine, how much longer for burn? 20 seconds. Houston, I will bypass the alarm. When burn is complete, I will do a visual inspection. Roger that, Terra Nova. You are a no-go for ATE. Repeat, no-go for abort. Copy that, Houston. On my mark, three, two, one. Engine throttle back. Terra Nova, Houston. We show all systems nominal. Perfect burn. Let's hope this is our excitement for the day. Only 581 more to go. Cycling down. Mikhail, start your inspection. Everybody else, prep for spin-up. Let's set a record. We will run cooldown thrust for four hours, 28 minutes. This is your captain speaking. Kindly stow your tray tables and return your seats to their upright position. We are go for artificial gravity. Houston Terra Nova, spin up for artificial gravity has been initiated. 0.7 G at 4.5 RPM in. 40 minutes and counting. Guilty party. Three burnouts on one board? Well, I've seen whole boards go bad. 
Not on this vehicle. Here, test them all. And those two cuties. How about um, Tintin and Milu, my heroes? Oh, you gotta be kidding. Don't tell me you're naming the mice. Why not? They're not pets, they're research tools. An early warning network in case our environmental systems break down. Think of how you'll feel when I have to centrifuge little Tintin's neural matter. If they have names, we can thank them in prayers for their sacrifice. Around here, prayers aren't a necessary protocol, Hiromi. Oh, and over there, that hard-nosed one? That's Lucia. I know you didn't want Adam to get a new glove till his math grades picked up, but your dad really wanted to get it for him, and, well... Look, Dad, it's a beauty. Grandpa helped me choose it. Yep. Bull drove, but your dad really wanted to make the trip with them. And he just seems so much better lately. I just couldn't refuse him. I'm sure you understand. Anyway... I don't think I'm ever going to get used to this one-way video mail. I liked it better when you were on the moon. A second and a half delay I could deal with. You send a message soon, okay? And about our little talk before you left, I do understand. You know that. So, it's one week down. And only 82 more to go. Right, Dad? That's not so bad. <laughs> Look at my captain doing dishes here. Yeah, it's the first time we see him do that it's in all these times. It's the night of the movies. <laughs> Good Everyone believe excited? it. Depends on the film. A little gem for my private collection. Uh-oh. Oh, I'll ignore that. So what's the movie? Rocket Ship XM, made in 1950. The first astronauts sent to the moon miss it and end up on Mars. Ah, good. Documentary. Come on, guys. Hurry up. Yes, hurry up, Rick. With my team, please. Stand by, everybody. We have to add 12% O3 to A16. Right. 12% O3 to A16. This means we'll have to rearrange some of the fuel tanks and all the connections. This is fantastic. It is so bad, it's actually brilliant. Well, I told you, it's a classic. It's a classic, all right. I love the scientific accuracy. What effect it does. Well, the 1950s were simpler, more innocent time. Mm -hmm. Look at the size of those meteoroids. What was that? Sounds like an impact. Central, report atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure nominal. Okay, that's the good news. There's definitely something moving out there. I know what it is. Two's unlatched and impacting the ESM. All right, so spin down and reset? Spinning down will take too long. I need to jettison it now before it does more damage. Do that and it could impact us even harder if we spin it too much. Now, if I wait, it could destroy the ESM. I think she's right. Do it. 
Okay, arm two, emergency disengage. Now, Jackie. Now I have to time the release properly so it doesn't impact the crew hub when we swing around. That was excellent. Warning. MTR event code 8564. It's a power spike from the MTRs. This can't be good. Okay, what do we got? That's strange. All systems nominal. Confirm that. Could be the arm impacting just disturbed the sensors. All right. Listen, the first thing that we need to do is use the remaining arm to check for damage from those impacts. So let's prep for spin down and get to work. All right. Coming up on the electrical supply module. Here it is. That's where arm two hit. Status report. Our inspection shows no visible signs of major damage, except for the dented ESM cover. Let's hope that it's uh, nothing worse than that. As far as system malfunctions go, Kyle is running his test, but we're going to need some help up here. And it's going to have to be something a, a little better than uh, we are working on it. You know, we can deal with random faults in uh, non-essential systems, but we are going to need a root cause for that NTR power spike. I mean, if a similar malfunction were to happen to the propulsion system during a burn, there are only two outcomes. And uh, one of them results in loss of vehicle and, and loss of crew. So don't wait to send us up finished reports. Please just keep us in the loop. Terra Nova out. What is it? Well, I feel it my duty to remind you that after our first malfunction, Michal only checked the circuit boards and avionics. Okay, and he found the problem, so what is your point? My point is... that similar boards are used in every system on this spacecraft. And we've had two other events since then. Okay, thank you. So, what's this all about? I wanted to ask if you'd had a chance to check on any other systems yet beyond avionics. The expert's starting to second-guess me now. Well, you can tell him that I drew up a fault tree to reconstruct the arm malfunction and the power surge that followed it. And still, I found nothing. But if he wants, but he can go and... Antoine just brought up a good point, that's all. Which is? Which is, either this ship is haunted or we've got serious problems. We've had three mouths already. Now, what else have we got to look forward to? Okay. Okay, I will check every system and subsystem, avionics, propulsion, guidance, navigation, control, everything, top to bottom. And maybe, just maybe, in 12 months, by the time we get to Mars, I'll be finished. And environmental. Well, I know you wouldn't enjoy drinking unprocessed urine any more than I would.
Uh, didn't tell me. Once again, why Bull is not the flight engineer on this mission? Commander Richard Irwin, psych assessment report, February 2nd, 2030. What can I say? As you know, I've never been entirely comfortable with the idea of a self-evaluation program. However, I realize that these findings may be useful for future missions. And so, here we go. Losing the arm so soon really bothers me. Now we only have one and still a year and a half to go. If that one fails, well, it'll be a lot more difficult to repair any exterior damage. Well, routine maintenance and repair is part of my job, but problems with the NTRs... I have a feeling that this mission will not be business as usual. I'm both puzzled and concerned. Puzzled that despite years of rigorous NTR testing, we evidently failed to detect a performance flaw. And concerned because, well, naturally, any irregularity in a nuclear system is cause for concern. Did I miss something that caused the lock mechanism to fail, or maybe it was unlatched by a spurious command? Either way, I should have been on top of it. Three malfunctions in a row, just getting started, doesn't exactly inspire me with a great deal of confidence. Hey, Hiromi. Yeah? All hands message coming in. Jack, you have to sort of busy right now. I'll watch the replay, okay? It's from Glenn Hartwell. Be right there. Why is Hartwell calling? You think he's gonna order us to abort? He may. If he does, can't we just pretend we're not home, you know? Never got the message? We'd have to pretend we're not home for the next 42 days. We can't abort to Earth any time until then. Rick? To everyone? I remember getting a call like this when I was commander of the first trip back to the moon. So, first things first. We know you're dealing with a few bad boards up there. But you are still a go. <clears throat> the second thing is, pretty much what we're expecting. Looks like you're gonna have some company up there. The Chinese launched 1800 hours GMT today. According to its trajectory, we know that it will get there ahead of you. But we're all still confident that we have the crew and equipment to successfully complete this mission. Out. Back in the early days of human spaceflight, doctors learned that people could spend a year or more in zero gravity and still do their jobs well. But when those space pioneers came back to Earth, they could take weeks, sometimes months, just rebuilding their muscles again. So that's why we spin our spacecraft to create what we call artificial gravity. Otherwise, when we land on Mars in 11 months, we'd have to spend the first half of our 60 days there just building our strength to do anything. So how do we create artificial gravity? Let's look at it this way. Let's pretend this is a beach bucket. Put some water. Hold it by the handle and swing it rapidly. You'll see that the water stays at the bottom of the bucket, just as if it was standing on the table in front of you. This is due to an effect we call centrifugal force. And that is why I can just stand here and talk to you like this today. That was a good one. Good. <laughs> And now, next question. A fourth grade class in Los Angeles wants to know, how do we go to the bathroom in space? Knight to Queens, Bishop three, check. Ooh. Bishop takes knight. Do you think it'd be easier on us if you used a board? Well, this way there's nothing for Hiromi to knock over when he realizes I'm winning. Very funny. 
and Bishop takes Bishop. Ouch. Checkmate in two? <laughs> of course not. King's Knight takes Bishop. Queen's Rook to King's Rook five. Pawn to King's Knight four. Check. And mate. Je pensais que les échecs se jouaient à deux. In these close quarters, when you play chess, we all play. Oh, I see. Come on, Jackie. It's our turn to check the hydroponic rack. Antoine, problems? The galley's down again. Now there's not even hot water to reheat this thing. Eating mush is bad. Cold mush, intolerable. Well, it doesn't seem to bother you. So it is my fault. Did I say that? No. But the way you look at me. Well, I'm sorry if my looking at you offends you. For your information, I've yet to find a single anomaly that can account for any of these malfunctions. So don't blame me if all the damn breakers in the galley keep jumping. But all of these problems must have a common cause. And it seems you're still no closer to finding it. And what have you been doing? Okay, let's not. No point in getting at each other's throats. We're all working the same problem here. Let's just be grateful that right now there's nothing more serious to deal with than a lack of hot water. We all right? Yes, of course. We're fine. Good. Listen, Antoine, I just wanted you to know that uh, if you ever have a problem, you know that you can come to me. But as far as assessing the crew's competence goes, that is my responsibility, not yours. So I'd appreciate it if you kept those opinions to yourself. Is that an order? Yes, it is. May I just say something? Yeah. I know that you and Mikhail have long been associates and friends. I also know I wasn't your first choice for this mission. In fact, I wasn't your choice at all. That's right. No, you're right. I, I expected to be here with Mikhail and Bull. Your friend. Headquarters got nervous about the NTRs. Yes, they wanted the best. That's why I'm here. It's unfortunate that you still don't share their opinion. Attention. Incoming message. Hey, guys. Sorry about the longer than normal delay, but uh, believe me, we haven't been idle down here. 
We're checking every chip, microprocessor. And, well, the bad news is that we're still baffled by all of this as much as you are. Used to now. Flight surgeon status report, March 28th, 2030. Um, evidently, all our technical glitches and malfunctions are starting to play on everyone's nerves. Mold from the toilet spill is also becoming more of a problem. Otherwise, the crew are all eating and uh, sleeping well. Morale is steady and uh, so far, no knife fights. This is getting intolerable. Antoine continues to challenge Rick, and he has no respect for anyone on this mission. I'm on this journey for only one reason, the NTLs, to prove that nuclear thermal technology is the only way to go for all future space travel. Quite honestly, I, I find him to be aloof and arrogant, and I remain concerned about having a flight engineer by my side that I quite simply don't know very well. Let's just say that sometimes the engineer pilot culture can get a little wearing. It's lonely up here. It's only the six of us, and sometimes I wish I could talk to someone else. I'm certainly not here for the camaraderie, which I often find juvenile and very North American in tone, despite the presence of Dr. Shrenkov and Dr. Okuda. Obviously, both of them have spent considerable time in the United States. The last thing that we need to deal with is his arrogant personality, which is a detriment to the team spirit, which we depend on for our lives. Uh, I do remain optimistic, however, that Antoine will eventually integrate himself into the team, and of course I will work in order to uh, facilitate that. Once we get to Mars, I'll get my turn in the driver's seat. Happy birthday. Oh. Happy 20th birthday. Mars years. They're twice as, twice as long. long. <laughs> or twice as nice. <laughs> Otanjobi omedito. Arigato gozaimasu. Mm -hmm. The complete collection, 37 books, 8 movies, 11 radio shows, and 2 television series of Tintin, my hero. So we have heard many times. <laughs> <laughs> and another one. Twenty. Wow. Thank you, guys. To Tintin. To Tintin. To Tintin. To Tintin. And his faithful dog. You know, I was only eight the first time I read The Moon Adventure. Tanta and Minu go into space. Never forgot it. Ah, that explains it. Tanta was your inspiration. Yes, indeed. And how about yours, Antoine? War. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Really. A president of France once said, Ever since humans began waging war, there's been a permanent race between sword and shield. The sword always wins. I agree. So I build nuclear thermal rockets to give humanity not only Mars, but Mercury, the asteroids, moons of Jupiter, Saturn. They'll make colonization possible. Make us an interplanetary species. Free us from the next extinction event to decimate the Earth. More than likely one of our own doing. And Rick, how about you? What was your inspiration? Um... My old man, I guess. Uh, he, he wasn't an astronaut, but he was a naval pilot. Yeah. He always wanted to go into space, but he never made it, so... 
Well, that's your father's dream. What about yours? Hey, look at this. Looks like the nutrient settings changed all by themselves. It doesn't make sense. I changed the circuit board only three days ago. Well, maybe, but check this out. Cold mush, no parsley. What's next? Ten years. Billions of dollars, thousands of engineers, and the fans don't even work. Let me look at this again. Well, I offer my opinion. <sighs> yeah, go ahead. Well, I was thinking, why is it we're plagued by constant problems? At the same time, I remembered our mission was moved up in the schedule. Suddenly, it all made sense. Well, you think they rush things just to get a jump on the Chinese? Ah, uh, yes, conspiracy theory. That's ridiculous. They wouldn't do something like that. Wouldn't they? I think you underestimate human ambition. All right. Assuming that it's true, what is your point? Look behind us. Earth is just a tiny dot in the sky. There may be hundreds of people back there supporting us, but up here, it's just the six of us. Okay, where are you going with this? I know where he's going, and I think that he's right. Okay, Mikhail, I want you and Antoine to work out some way of bypassing the master boards. We all do whatever it takes to make sure there are no more problems with our critical systems. From now on, we assume that it is only up to us. Turns out you'll be getting a red Christmas in more ways than one. The Mars Telecom Network confirms the Chinese lander has touched down and is operational. Only 22 clicks from your site. Even better, its solar powered drill has been successfully deployed. I don't know what else I can tell you guys. No one will say it officially. But down here, it's like the old days of Project Apollo. A race. First to find water, first to find life. And I don't have to tell you that our team is expected to win. Used to now. I guess that's what it's all about now. Winning. Isn't that what it's always about? How deep can it go? Well, it's a wireline drill like ours. And from the amount of cable, let's say 150, maybe 180 meters. And it's got the instruments to analyze the samples here. And here. Mm -hmm. Right. So if it does hit water, it's got the equipment to test for life. Yes. Yes. Right. Well, then I guess the race is on then.
<laughs> We're really here, guys. We're really gonna do this. Yeah, better believe it. Nothing can stop us now. Uh, Jackie, that's called hubris. Navy did a flyby missing man formation, and Adam stood up, and he saluted when they went over. Your dad was so proud of him. He was so proud of you, Rick. Oh, the nurses said that's all he talked about. His son taking his wings to Mars. I know they videoed the service, so Bull's gonna put it into the next batch transmission. I keep forgetting to ask, how is the mold from the spilled water? And did you ever see that commercial for, I don't know, some cleanser with all of you scrubbing the walls after the toilet broke? Why don't you tell your dad? Yeah, it was pretty funny. You reminded me of my grumpy janitor at school. <laughs> but you were really cool, Dad. That's your son, your number one fan. I guess that's it for now. Oh, we both miss you. Yeah. Would you get the door for Bull, honey? I'll talk to you tomorrow. I love you. Attention, incoming message marked urgent. I can't imagine worse possible news for you. But what can I say? It was deliberate fraud on the part of the supplier. The only way they could deliver on schedule was to file false reports. Bottom line, some of the boards on the Terra Nova come from untested batches that can suffer random dropouts. There's no way to guarantee a successful Mars orbit insertion burn. So I hate to have to tell you this, but... Well, we strongly advise you complete a Mars gravity assist maneuver and enter a free return trajectory back to Earth. Sorry it took so long to find this out, guys. Blame it on us. But hey, we're still going into the history books. So come on home. Out.
So, it seems like we have a decision to make here. What decision? The race is over. The race, yeah, maybe. That's not why we came here, is it? What are you suggesting? Glenn told us not to land. No, he advised us. It's not the same thing. We're a spacecraft underway. So, Antoine, this plan that you and Mikhail have to uh, bypass the main circuit boards, is this something that we think can work for a burn? Hard to say. And we're still far from a complete backup system. Well, I'm just talking about bypassing the NTR controls. That we can complete the whole backup system on our crew's home. Can't we? It's a possibility. But I think Glenn's recommendation makes sense. No, it makes no sense at all. I spent 11 months in this stinking, malfunctioning hulk. Also, I could spend a few days doing science on Mars. I want to land. I want to do my work. Okay, so what about the rest of us? I'm in. Do you remember what President Kennedy said during the Apollo project? We choose to go to the moon not because it is easy, but because it is hard. Because it is a goal that will organize and measure the best of our skills and our energies. Because it is a challenge that we are willing to accept and unwilling to postpone. Isn't that why we're here now? We have a majority. Well, it's not enough. It's got to be all or nothing. Six hours to test my system. This mission is a go for Mars capture. Houston Terra Nova at MOI minus 15 seconds. All systems remain green. Status? Pre cool off. Power at 1%. MOI minus 8 seconds. Secondary cooling system. Enabled. 5, 4, 3. Two, one, ignition. All systems nominal. 
Looking good, Antoine. Just hope it ends on cue. If it fails, the low point of our orbit could intersect the planet's surface. They'd probably see the explosion from Earth. Hey, maybe they'll name the crater after us. Four, three, two, one, eagle. Engine cutoff confirmed. Mars capture. Houston, Terra Nova, we have achieved orbit. Antoine. I have a choice. Sometimes I think we are alone in the universe. And sometimes I think that we are not. In either case, the idea is quite staggering. Arthur C. Clarke. Good one, Mikhail. Yeah, good writer. And the inventor of the telecommunication satellite. And not even Russian. Yeah, not even Russian. Didn't he also say that Mars has no mountains? No, sands of Mars. But that was a long time ago. Nobody's perfect, huh? We're supposed to be. It's a big responsibility, Ludochka. More like a lot of pressure. I just want to do my job without it having galactic significance. Mm. Look out there. All that God has made Come on. That is big. Compared to that, our problems are nothing. Like us, they're weightless. <laughs> oh, you have a nice smile. Just like my mama. Docking with Gagarin in 90 minutes. 90 minutes. We are here. Glenn never actually used the word mutiny, but it's obvious that's what he was thinking. Those of us in the trenches, though, we think you made the right call. Given the time delay, by the time you hear this, I will be in the mission support room helping load champagne into the coolers. I can say you make us proud, but you already have. We'll see you on Mars. Houston out. Confirmation that solar panels are fully retracted. We are go for docking. All right, time to hitch a ride. Automated final approach proceeding. Garen capture confirmed. Very good. Our concern right now is that the data from the orbiters indicate that a dust storm may be heading toward the landing site. 
So I have decided to cut our rest period from the schedule so that we can make our descent a day early. Gotta say, none of us is much in the mood for resting at this point anyway. Taranova, I mean Gagarin, out. Grandparents were Jews at a very difficult time. And it was not so easy for my grandparents or parents either, so... Today, on the first night of Hanukkah, as I step onto Mars, I will be Jewish for everyone. <laughs> Did you bring anything special to carry with you? Yep. Picture of my dog. <laughs> that is good. I'm sure you'll make him very happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Thank you. 
people of the world. From all the peoples of the earth. From all the peoples of the earth. From all the peoples of the earth. Glove Sivomira. Para toda la gente del mundo. We are the first to come to Mars. We will not be the last. Congratulations, everyone. Here they come. Taxi. <laughs> right on time, Jackie. All right, we still have some time before that storm reaches us. Jackie and Hiromi, you'll come with me to check the hab. Everybody else, just like the Sims, 200 meters upwind of our exhaust to collect contingency samples. Copy that. Copy that. Settle down back there. I'm going to turn this SUV right around. Copy that. that. But are we there yet? Then we've got a problem. What is it, Rick? Secondary starboard one landing gear is not fully deployed. Now what? Well, you know the rules. Without full support, the hab is off limits. Well then, I guess we gotta find a way to get it down. Is there any way to deploy the leg manually? Checking. And if we can't force it down, we'll have to move to contingency. <sighs> That's the mission from 60 souls to 10. Yeah, and working from the Gagarin. Now there's something to look forward to. Yeah. Bringing up the landing gear diagrams. Or can the clocky girl engineer fix the bothersome leg, save the day, and win the thanks of a grateful planet? Right, plan C. I go for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, everyone, let's get back to work. All right, I'm gonna need some extra hands to force it. You know, it should lock into position, okay? Rip. 
I'm gonna pull this down here. Copy that. Me. I'm gonna push here when I approach the gas line. Got it. All we need to do is ease it down. All right. Now, just a second. Okay, let's try again. All right, on my three, two, one, pull. Hiromi. Hiromi. Lucia. Man down. Hiromi, look at me. Can you still breathe? Lucia Turek, what's your status? The leg has snapped back on Hiromi. It's got his arm pinned and his suit's bent, and we're going to need some help here. Copy that. We're on our way. Hey, you're going to be all right. I'm going to get you down, but I need you to lock your knees. You understand? Okay, we're going to force this down on three, okay? okay. Three, okay. two, one, boom! It's starting to give. Come on, you sucker! Oh. Ah. Ah. Madison, Atlantis, do you copy? Go ahead. See, we got him down. Good. Describe his condition. Uh, can you give me a visual? Yeah, his glove connector is, is deformed. And there is some blood bubbling out here. How big is the hole? I can't really see it. The blood should freeze. Let's hope it seals the leak. We're almost there. I need you to breathe nice and easy, okay? You're hyperventilating. You need to conserve your oxygen. You're gonna be all right. They're on their way. Your secondary oxygen pack is working. All right, they're here, Hiromi. Stay calm. Rick, what's his secondary oxygen status? 40% remaining. It's gonna be all right. We have to get him in the lab. Well, the hab's not secure until that leg's down. And then you'd better hurry, because we're going inside. He'll never make it back to the Gagarin in time. Hiromi, we're going to brace your arm, all right? We need you to brace your arm, but we're going to lift him on three, okay? Three, two, one. <laughs> all right, let's get this leg down. Okay. Slow your breathing. You're at 35% remaining. Hold him steady. Hiromi, breathe easy. And one, on my count. Three, two, one. We're almost in. We're gonna make it. We need some more leverage. Okay, airlock's open. Let's get him in quick. A few more steps, Hiromi. That's good. Let's get that hatch closed, Mika. We could wedge it here. Hang on. Set him on the table. Ready here, Omi? Brace his arm. At my count. One, two, three. <laughs> Remove the sleeve. The ring is broken. Cut off the cover. I want to see it. Hiromi? Hiromi, look at me. Stay with me. All right? Breathe in slowly. All right? Okay. That's good. The ring is not embedded in the arm. Attach a shoulder ring. Hiromi, listen to me. Okay. All right? 
You're gonna have to be really still. This is really gonna hurt. Just do it. It's okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. Now, take a deep breath. I'm ready. Ready? Ready. Good, 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 good. Breathe in, breathe in. Good. Status. We've got an open wound and a pretty bad fracture. Copy that. We're on our way in. No one's ever seen anything like it. It's been two days and they tell me the party is still going on in Sydney, Tokyo, Montreal. Wow. It's just amazing. that first step Rick that wasn't the script public affairs gave you people from all over the world are downloading footage to figure out who took that first step let's hope they never do I hope you're having a well-deserved party of your own up there Houston Adam Antoine, you must know this one. Yes, let's hear that great baritone voice of yours. Turn up. Favorite. Some assembly required. Can you help me with this one? Uh, you pull it out, I'll grab the bag. Okay. Got it? So, today is the big day. Happy birthday, Adam. 11 years old. My God, you're gonna be shaving by the time I get home. Uh, they finally uploaded the recording of your Christmas assembly. <laughs> Very funny. You, you, I mean, in the parts where you were supposed to be funny, <laughs> you were great. Um, we've been pretty busy up here, I guess you know that. Uh, but today, of course you know that today was also your grandpa's birthday. You know, he always said that you were the best present that he ever got, and you were. So today, uh, after I finish my work, I'm gonna do something special for the two of you. So you look up here tonight, and uh, I'll be the guy in the spacesuit waving back at you. I love you, son. Happy birthday.
right there above the horizon, just between Saturn and Phobos. Dinosaurs, the Roman Empire, rainforests, every book that's ever been written, everyone we've ever loved. This is all my father ever dreamt of. Seeing the Earth from another world. Sleep tight, son. Civilizations are either spacefaring or extinct. Easy. Carl Sagan. <laughs> My turn. There is life on Mars, and it is us. Are you kidding me? Hmm? It only. No, wise guy. Our fellow Martian, Ray Bradbury. The Vanguard mission of 16 proved there was some kind of simple life on Mars. But the big question is how did it get here? Did life arise here independently? Or was it contaminated by spores from space? <sighs> Haven't we heard this spory? That's Ben Spermia 101. Exactly. Life seeded by meteorites from another world. Or even an impact on Earth that blasted rocks all the way out here. And what if it was the other way around? If life arose here first, and an impact blasted Martian rocks to our planet? Well, then we're all Martians. We know one of us is. Atlantis, Kiviok, come back. Uh, go ahead, Lucia, we copy. Uh, we're good to go here. How's the telemetry? Telemetry's online. Kiviok, Atlantis, we confirm you're good to go. Copy that. Mikhail, you wanna start it no, up? No, be my guest, Ludochka. You can tell your dog that you're the first one to ever dig a hole on Mars. He'll be very jealous. <laughs> I'll be honored, my friend. Drill the sending. Drill lowered. And... Drilling initiated. some water. <laughs> the EVAs are exhausting. You're trapped inside a bulky suit, working long hours in a difficult environment. Believe me, it's not my idea of a vacation. But right now, there's no place else I'd rather be. It's tough on everyone, but things are going well, and we have managed to remain on schedule. As for Hiromi, of course, I feel bad for him. We all do. But he's a team player, and he knows that he still has an important role to play, even if it is from the bench. Claire! Claire! 
Oh, there is nothing like a shower once a week. Whether you need it or not. No. Someday, we are going to build a hotel here so that tourists can drive here to see this historic site on weekends and holidays. We'll pay a Martian dollar, and we'll walk to the Mars hub, and they will not believe how we survived in these conditions. You Russians are such romantics. Yes, we are. And so are you, Lucio. Think about it. We have risked our lives every day just to find water. Because water means life. Life, Lucio. So that future generations will be able to make their own oxygen, grow crops in greenhouses, build cities. And maybe even take two showers a day, whether they need it or not. <laughs> well, you cannot fool me, Lucia, because I know that you are a very sensitive girl underneath that hard shell of yours. Repeat that to anyone and I'll have to kill you. <laughs> Being a man short obviously makes things more difficult, means more work all around. But so far, everyone is picking up the slack without comment or complaint. Even Antoine. <laughs> I'm very pleased about that. Sometimes I stop and look around just to let it sink in some more. And every time I become a child again. Like the time I looked up at the night sky and saw all those distant stars for the very first time. Of course I want us to be the first. But no matter who wins, it will be like finding the Rosetta Stone to understanding life. And I think that will be pretty good for humanity. Rick is doing more than his share of extra shifts to make up for Hiromi. So far, he's holding up well. His will and stamina are extraordinary. Nevertheless, I'm watching him closely. We're having the usual stuff. Drill bits wearing down, things like that. But the big problem is the dust. It gets in everything. So things jam and fail faster than we anticipated. In fact, a lot faster. We're already running low on some parts, so now I'm getting concerned about our supplies. News from home. It's the big boss. That can't be good. Okay. Good evening, everyone. I don't want to alarm you, but I figure you should hear the bad news right away. We just decrypted the latest telemetry from the Chinese lander. It reached water. We'll send you the data and more info as we get it, but looks like they beat us to the punch. Oh. Whatever they find doesn't matter. If there's life, we'll still be the first to take it back home. Come on, let's check your arm, see if we can't change it for a lighter cast. Hey guys, look 
look at this. Look at the size of that. That is huge. Electrostatic discharge. Good. Strength is coming back. All right. Jackie, do you copy? Go ahead, Rick. Mikhail and I are on site. Okay, good. So, what's the diagnosis on the drill? Can we do a patch up? Well, if we can find a hardware store, the electronics look totally fried. So, that's it. And I have some more good news. Our last motor was also destroyed. The data is in from ground control. Look at that. That's got to be sterile. What? What is it? Rick, Lucy and I are just looking at the data from the Chinese sample. It's loaded with calcium chloride. Okay, meaning? Meaning it's saltier than the Dead Sea. You could walk on that stuff. Hiram is right. It's highly unlikely life could exist in that water. So what? We won't have any better luck. We have no drill. Of course we do. I know where we can find one. Cheap. Madam Secretary General, Madam Prime Minister, all three Mr. Presidents. It's important that you understand that we are not naive in making this request. No major voyage of discovery has ever been free of political motive, and we certainly understand that. But people have been dreaming of going to Mars for centuries. And so we put it to you that this expedition can be different, because this world that we have come to is different. You are all leaders of great nations, but on Mars there are no borders. Only six human beings representing everyone. Not far from us, the dreams of another country have also been cut short. And so today we are requesting that you transcend politics and ask not what you can do for your own countries, but what you can do for all the world. Next week, the exciting conclusion to Race to Mars. They've done it, it's working. Isn't it beautiful? Lucia, come here. I don't like this. What is your status? Hiromi, Jackie, Antoine, respond. I'm willing to consider the possibility of alien contamination. Commander Irwin is sick and is currently unable to make the right decision. Am I wrong about this? I really don't know. It's just us. Just now. Just for this moment. Now you're gambling the rest of our lives on another questionable decision. Hey, hey, I need some help here. He's barely breathing. I can no longer guarantee our safe return to Earth. Race to Mars concludes next week.
watching Discovery HD.